Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be talking about the other influences on investment markets. This is chapter 21 of subject CA1. And in chapter 20, we looked at the economic influences on investment markets. And, you know, the economic influences were, if I change interest rates, how is that going to affect equity markets? Or if bond yields drop, what's going to happen to the property market? Those are uh, popular ex exam questions that you are required to write an essay on in order to answer it. But there's another part um, to investment markets that doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily economical, but there are other influences. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this chapter. And this is a nice, easy, quick chapter as we're going to be looking at two things. We're going to be looking at supply and demand. So without further ado, let's start talking about the demand factors. Okay, so we've got demand factors here. And so these were my old study notes. So you can see I'm going to be using a lot of, they could be to you quite random pictures, just to help me remember um, the information here. But the demand factors was the investor's perception. So that's why I've got a picture of the cat. You know, and he perceives himself to be a lion. So it's all about the investor's perception of the characteristics of the assets. You know, risk versus return. And what is going to influence this investor's perception? Well, this is just his, it's his opinion. Um, and this is something that's internal. It's within his own mind. Um, and he's also going to be influenced by external factors. Okay, this is the investor's income. How much money does he have to play with? What are the prices of the other assets? So if property is really cheap and even though he's got a good hunch for equity, he may change his mind and rather invest more into property because of the price. And also what is his, not only his preference, but what are other investors' preferences and can he play against them and profit from them? So with demand, whoops, with demand, factors, I like to think of it as a volcano. So we have this picture of this volcano here, fume and a volcano, and this was just to help me remember these six points. And because the, the volcano looks like the triangle sign, which is the delta, which means change. So if an investor has a change in his liabilities, or if there's change in regulations or taxes, it may influence his investment decision. So if the government says, we're going to now have a 10% increase in tax on your profits in the equity market, suddenly the equity market is not as desirable to him and he may look elsewhere. Also, if our investor's liabilities change, he's going to want to match his liabilities with assets that have similar properties to that. So if he now, I'm trying to think of just a random liability that he has, but if he makes a long-term loan, he's going to want to match that with an asset that is also of long-term. Um, but then there's all these other things, okay, uh, that spells fume. And that is fashion. So what is it fashionable to be investing in? And this is why we have stock market bubbles, because it becomes the fashion to invest in the stock market. Everybody wants to invest in it, and that pushes the price above what it's supposed to be. Um, something that could decrease the stock market is if there's uncertainty with politics. You know, if the government says they're going to just take all the land, then suddenly that scares everybody and um, property prices start going down. Um, interestingly, marketing. How well does it look? I mean, if, if you start watching um, the TV and there's all these ads from asset managers saying invest with us because the stock market is doing great, the stock market, blah, blah, blah then you're going to think, oh, wow, maybe I should also start investing in the stock market. And then education from suppliers. So the more people are educated on a particular asset, you know, they might uh, be more inclined to purchase it. So a lot of people stay away from property just because there's so much to know about. You need to know, you know the real estate agents and this type of rent and you know handing over the keys. But once they learn about that, you know, they may be more um, adventurous and actually invest in that asset class. So those, these are the demand factors. 
Um, we then also have supply factors. So especially let's say with bonds, um, if the government issues, you know, the government needs money, so it issues a whole bunch of bonds, okay? This is going to flood the market and it's going to increase the supply. And if that supply is not met by an equal uh, increase in demand, then it is going to alter the price and bring it down. Um, the exact opposite happens if the government starts redeeming bonds and that reduces the supply and if there isn't a reduction in demand, that's going to cause the price to increase. Okay, and remember, bonds are influenced by the fiscal deficit and their strategy when it comes to financing. So you need to know quite a bit on politics and what the government's goals are if you want to play the bond market. Uh, but like I said in my earlier videos, the bond market is huge and you can make a lot of money if you're smarter than the government or smarter than the other investors as well. Um, there's also the supply factors, technolo technology innovation, and this has been very true, as I've said here, for the derivative market. So before derivatives, it took quite a long time to calculate them, you know, what is what should be the strike price and all these various things. But today we have technology that and formulas and um, the internet that can calculate these prices extremely quickly, update them say every second. So, and because of this technology, and we've got even I think apps now where you can purchase derivatives on the mobile phone. This has increased the supply of um, this asset class, making it easier for investors to invest in. But yeah, that is um, the end of the chapter. In the next chapter, I will be looking at the relationship between returns on asset classes. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm MJ, the Student Actuary. Cheers.